Okay, so in this video we're going to be getting started with Ruby. In order to do that we have to install Ruby on our system. Now a lot of beginners have trouble setting up their development environment. When you are installing and configuring new software it can be a tedious and difficult process. There's a, many different operating systems and there's many different uh, options for configurations and there's sometimes different errors that arise and it can be very difficult to troubleshoot and fix those errors if you're a beginner and you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing. So sometimes it could be a pain getting started and it can be very frustrating. One solution to that is to use an online integrated development environment uh, such as Cloud9. Now with Cloud9 you can get started right away. You don't have to install anything on your system because you're going to be doing it. It's web-based. So it's a good way to try out uh, programming and to try out coding, see if you like Ruby, see if you like coding, uh, see if this is for you. This way you don't have to worry about installing any software, you don't have to worry about troubleshooting issues. All you have to do is go online, try it out. If everything works out and you want to continue to use the Cloud9 service, that's great. It's free. It doesn't cost anything for the basic service. And if you want to begin developing on your own machine, then at that point you'll be a little bit more familiar with some of the terminology, maybe with using the command prompt, and it might be a little bit easier for you uh, to install it. And should any issues arise, then you can troubleshoot them at that point. So what we're going to do is in this video is go through and show you how to get started using Ruby on Cloud9. The first thing you're going to want to do is create a basic account, which is free. All you have to do is type in your email address, Team University. They'll ask you for a name, username. Okay, when it gets to this point, you will have to put in your credit card information. Now, they don't charge you for anything. I've had a Cloud9 account for uh, quite a while now, several months at least, and they've never charged me for anything. Um, there's never been any erroneous billing charges or anything like that. It's just simply in order to use the uh, account. Um, the free accounts are pretty robust for for not paying anything they let you use their servers and they're covering the cost of the storage they're covering the cost of the ram they're covering all of your costs you're not paying anything so for hobbyists people that are learning or just getting started you're getting a very a very good service for free now because of that they need to make sure that the people that are using it are actually not taking advantage of them and using it as it's supposed to be used. It's intended to be used um, by people that are just starting out learning or hobbyist. Um, they don't want people to abuse the system. In my experience, uh, Cloud9 has been very uh, great service, so I don't think that there's any issues. If you do have an issue with putting your credit card information in, I don't believe there's a way to continue. Um, with this service, you might have to find another cloud provider. That being said, I'm going to enter my credit card information and resume the video on the next screen. Okay, I've just entered my credit card information and the last step is to click on the reCAPTCHA verify that you're not a robot. It's going to ask that I select all the signs with street numbers. and then it's going to create my account. Now once my account is created, 
you'll see there's some different settings and you can access your account and everything on the top here you have a sidebar here with workspaces and repositories you can link uh, your github account with cloud9 what we're going to want to do first to get started is create a new workspace we're going to enter a name for it so we're going to put learning ruby and a description we're going to leave it as public you can clone an existing repository from github or a bitbucket now we're going to select ruby for our template because that will come with everything that we need on it and then we're going to click create workspace there's a lot of documentation that comes with cloud9 and a lot of different settings and options that you can choose to play with um, I prefer to code with a dark theme Uh, I generally will split the layout with, uh, whoops, I wanted to do vertical and not horizontal. Oops. Okay. So, let me see here. There we go. Ruby uses two spaces. and then it takes you right to the preferences. Now, I'm not going to set up any other preferences right now, but you can set up preferences if you choose. There's a short tutorial that you can watch. I recommend that you do take advantage of all of the tutorials. Read over the documentation if you have the time. What we're going to do is get started right away. We're going to create a new file. We're going to use Command S to save the file, we're going to name it uh, first file or something like that. Dot rb. By default, it puts us in the root directory, which is learning Ruby, and you can see we're all set up here for a Ruby and Rails application. Right now, we're not going to do anything with that. We're just going to create a file called first file rb and save. Now we have a Ruby file that we can type in. You can see our file right here, which is in the root directory. And we're going to type in puts for put string hello. In Ruby, you do not need to end the line with a semicolon. You can end it with a, a new line, or you don't need to have the new line. We're going to command S again to save. We're going to click down here. This is uh, our terminal. You can see it says bash web team U learning Ruby. And if we type PWD, it's going to give us home, Ubuntu, and workspace. So if you look here, workspace, and then this is our root directory. So everything here is available on our workspace. So if I type Ruby, and then the name of the file, first-file.rb, it will execute that file which as you can see has returned the text hello because all that's all that file was programmed to do was to put a string hello so now we're able to code in Ruby our online cloud editor doesn't cost anything and we can begin to write Ruby programs and code almost immediately it's very easy to get started with cloud9 this is, like I said, the recommended way of doing it. There's a lot more features you can take advantage of with the online development environment. So I do recommend that you go through their little uh, tutorial, read some of the documentation, uh, check out the settings so you can so you can be 
uh, coding in the most comfortable environment that fits you best. I like the dark environment uh, because I think that the contrast between bright colors and dark background is, is the easiest to code with, um, but it's a personal preference. So this is how we get started coding with Ruby on Cloud9.